my, my stuff that gets uh, kind of uh, R-rated sometimes, well, every once in a while. Anyway, yeah, but I feel like I'm, a, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to my like songwriting. I feel like I'm uh, kind of uh, one of those guys that's uh, got that uh, mild like OCD when it comes to like certain things. Uh, speaking of which, I got a... You ever get those weird like pop-up ads on your like computer? I got this one pop-up ad. You ever take those like online quizzes? No? <laughs> no, I got an online quiz that said like, how OCD are you? It's like, really? I think my, uh, my uh, computer is uh, trying to tell me something. <laughs> How OCD are you, really? Like really, uh, 2019, is that where we at right now? What next? Uh, how uh, fucking schizophrenic are you? Like, where do you like draw the line with that? <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't know, like, uh, this part of the reason I do stand-up, like, helps boost my confidence, just in general. Like, uh, one of these days, I don't know, one of these days, uh, and maybe in the next, like, five to ten years, I want to have the self-confidence of a middle-aged East Coast Italian. <laughs> You'll see me at, a, like, a bar, a club, or whatever. I'll be like, I uh, see a cute girl walk by. I'll be like, yo, cutie, bye. Hey, hey, yeah, you, you, you. Hey, what you, uh, what, what you doing tonight, huh? Uh, hanging out with my boyfriend? <laughs> you got a boyfriend, huh? That's, uh, that's cute, uh, but uh, I'm not going to lie. You look like the kind of girl that you used to, huh? <laughs> And if you don't know, know what that reference is from, it's from uh, Johnny Bravo. Remember Johnny Bravo? Any 90s uh, kids in here? Anybody? Yeah, that's right. Johnny Bravo. Good old... I fucking miss the 90s, to be honest. That was before uh, political correctness killed comedy. <laughs> but no, like, literally, like, everyone's gotten really politically correct nowadays. Even the, like, fucking, like, neo-Nazi groups I've run into in the past have gotten politically correct. Uh, I have a story for that, by the way. Have you guys ever heard about True Folk? It's, uh, if you don't know who True Folk is, it's like the, uh, let me put it this way, it's like the, uh, diet version of, like, the Aryan Brotherhood. Because instead of, like, swastikas, they have, like, neo-pagan symbols. Anyway, uh, story time. Uh, me and my friend, who's, uh, Jewish, by the way, were out at this park, out in, I think it was, like, the Escondido area, this is about a year ago. We see these neo uh, it wasn't neo-Nazi symbols, but it was like neo-pagan symbols, but we kind of, we got the hint, kind of, and uh, we see these group of people, right? That's the true folk. And out of nowhere, I guess, uh, me and my friend, we just kind of ran into one of these guys. We started, like, strike up a conversation. <laughs> He's like, basically, you know, we strike up a conversation, like, toward the end of the conversation, uh, my friend just bluntly asked, so, like, what are you guys about? And he just, like, hits us like a ton of bricks, right? So this guy, let's say his name is uh, Kenny. So Kenny's like, you know how people these days are all about like diversity, equality, and like integration, and like different races, cultures, and creeds. Well, uh, we're basically the opposite of that. Anyway, hey, I'm Kenny. I'd love to stay and chat with y'all, but uh, me and the boys are gonna go down and do some uh, karaoke. Man, imagine watching those guys do karaoke, man. Dude, I would literally pay to see that shit. I feel like they would do like maybe like their own like rendition of like certain like songs, right? Or like certain like singers, you know? Or for for instance, like instead of like you know Billy Joel, it's like Hillbilly Joel. Instead of like you know uh, Piano Man, it's uh, Banjo Man. You know, it sounded a little uh, something like this. Anyway, here we go. Here's uh, Banjo Man by uh, Hillbilly Joel. It's ten o'clock on a Tuesday. The blue collar crowd shovels in. There's a trucker in the bathroom doing ecstasy, making love to his second cousin. He said, son, can you play us a different melody? I'm not sure about this one, but it blows. Well, it's sappy and it reminds me of the other day when my own son was counting all his six toes. Dum, dum, da, 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 dum. Play us a jam, you're the banjo man. Play us a jam tonight. Cause we're all in the mood for a lowdown, and we're already fucked up alright. Now Tom at the bar is a dealer of mine who gets me my drugs for cheap. But he's discreet with his toes, or when he sneaks in my smokes, cause jail's a place he'd rather not be. He said, Billy, I believe business is killing me, as his smile turns into a frown. Well, you know that I could be a rock star once I move out this sick town. Now Sal is another ex-convict who was accused of hitting his wife. And he was talking to Jason, 
who's still in prison and probably will be for life. And the bartender's practicing economics as the con men try to offer us loans. Yes, we all share a drink we call pettiness, but it sure beats getting wasted at home. <clears throat> now it's a pretty good crowd for a Tuesday. <laughs> and the manager slips me a pill, because he knows it was me he was coming to see, just to cheat on his wife for a thrill. And the banjo sounds like jarble, and the megaphone smells like tears. And we sit at the bar and count tips out the jar and whisper, hey man, what are the Jews doing here? Alright, that's my time.